coming to 26th question. Here is an 18-year-old woman present for an annual physical examination. She had a brother who died suddenly at the age of 24. She is active and asymptomatic. She is 170 centimeters in height, 68 kilograms in weight. Her arm span to height ratio is 1.07. is very significant. Anything more than 1.04 suggestive of Marfan syndrome. Head and neck examination notable for high arch palate. Slit lamp examination shows ectopia lentis. Musculoskeletal examination is notable for pectus carinatum and a positive wrist and a thumb sign. Cardiac examination is notable for a mitral valve click and a soft murmur of MR, which is suggestive of mitral valve prolapse. The patient has evidence of enlargement of ascending iota and aortic root since last year. So now they wanted to use ARBs in this individual. And what is the postulated mechanism of using angiotensin receptor blocker in this individual? First of all, what is the problem in Marfan syndrome? We know that this pain is having Marfan syndrome, there is no doubt. The problem in Marfan syndrome is fibrillin 1 gene mutation and it is inherited in an autosomal dominant fashion with variable penetrance. And fibrillin 1 is going to act as a scaffold for attachment of elastin. And if there is a fibrillin 1 gene mutation, you are not going to have attachment of the elastin fibers and there will be disintegration of elastin. And that will result in problems in the areas that require elastin like heart valves or probably blood vessels, especially the arteries. So that's why you get problems in Marfan syndrome. Second, fibrillin 1 also attaches to another molecule called TGF beta. Because of fibrillin 1 gene mutation in Marfan syndrome, this TGF beta cannot bind to fibrillin 1, which results in increased local concentrations of TGF beta, that is transforming uh, growth, growth factor beta, or transformation growth factor beta, which results in increased deposition of extracellular matrix in that area and at the same time it will result in increased activation of matrix metalloproteins as well which will again cause disintegration of the matrix as well as your elastin and the high tg of beta is one of the cornerstone for problems that happens in patients with Marfan syndrome so it's believed that angiotensin receptor blockers by acting on angiotensin 1 receptors can down-regulate the production of TGF beta and that's why it can have beneficial effect in patients with Marfan syndrome. Remember, it's ARBs and not AC inhibitors that are going to be beneficial in patients with Marfan syndrome. So the right answer for this question is going to be option number C. And of course, you need to know one more thing with regards to Marfan syndrome that is revised GENT criteria. The revision came in 2010 and based on this, Criteria can diagnose Marfan syndrome uh, using few features in that the first thing is to look for family history of Marfan syndrome. If it is there, then your diagnosis becomes very simple. All you need to have is any one of aortic root dilatation or ectopia lentis or systemic features as defined by systemic score of more than or equal to 7 at least. If any one is there. Along with the family history of Marfan syndrome, you can make a diagnosis pretty easily. If you do not have a family history, then in this situation, you need to demonstrate fibrillin 1 gene mutation in certain situations. Remember, if you have a family history, you need not demonstrate fibrillin 1 gene mutation. If you have, if you do not have a family history, then uh, you have to take four things together. So one is aortic root dilatation. Second is ectopia lentis. Third one is systemic features as defined by systemic score of more than or equal to 7. And of course, in some situations, you need to prove fibrillin 1 gene mutations because you don't have the family history here. If you have aortic root dilatation with ectopia lentis, you can diagnose Marfan syndrome according to revised GEN criteria. Or if you have aortic root dilatation with Fibrillin 1 gene mutation, you can still make a diagnosis of Marfan syndrome according to revised scan criteria. And if you have aortic root dilatation along with systemic features as defined by systemic score of more than or equal to 7, still you can make a diagnosis of Marfan syndrome according to revised scan criteria. And finally, in the presence of ectopia lentis, if we can prove that the patient is having fibrillin 1 gene mutation, you can make a diagnosis of Marfan syndrome as well. And in the revised scan criteria, they also uh, Give what kind of scoring you can give for assessing the systemic features. So you can give three points if the patient is exhibiting both 
thumb and wrist sign. But if the patient is having either thumb or wrist sign, then you are going to award only one point. Two points will be awarded for pectus carinatum, but only one point for pectus excavatum. And hind foot deformity carries two points, but flat foot will carry only one point. Spontaneous pneumothoraces, dural ectasia, and protrusia stable in the pelvic x ray, all these things will carry two points. Whereas your uh, scoliosis or kyphosis, reduced elbow ext extension, and uh, facial features, especially dolicocephaly, skin stray, presence of severe myopia, and mitral valve prolapse, all these things are going to carry only one point. I think the patient in question, what we have been discussing, is definitely having Marfan syndrome because she's having a family history. Along with that, she is having multiple systemic features, including pectus carinatum, which carries two points, mitral valve prolapse, which carries one point, and she's having positive wrist and thumb sign, which carries three points, and she's having aortic root dilatation, she's having ectopia lentis. Okay, so there are a lot of things that are suggestive of Marfan syndrome here. As I told you, in the presence of family history, if you have any one of ectopia lentis or aortic root dilatation or systemic features, you can make a diagnosis of Marfan syndrome. This patient is actually having all three, ectobalentis, aortic root dilatation, as well as systemic features. Plus, along with it, this patient is having family history also. So definitely, according to revised gain criteria, you don't need to do anything else at all. No need of any fibrillin one gene mutation here. Straight away, can make a diagnosis of Marfan syndrome. Subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from PrepLadder.